you ever just buy something really badass and you just keep thinking about it thinking about it and thinking about it even after you have bought it yeah well that's what I did and I'm here to tell you about it document the journey along the way let's get into it before you stands a 2006 M1165 ECV Humvee. It is a 6.5 liter turbo diesel, four speed with overdrive. Start off with some exterior stuff. Obviously, right here, you can see the tear out there in the aluminum, which really sucks. Hopefully I can get a patch panel or learn how to weld aluminum get that fixed but that is because it did at one point have the deep water fording exhaust that came along here and connected down here and I believe they probably hit it on a tree or another vehicle or something and just ripped it out and stuck a regular exhaust on there we do have the snorkel top and you can tell inside the cab where there once was the deep water fording knob there that was taken out at some point but that's the real main damage there and then right here there's one of these strips on either side those have some galvanic corrosion going on here so it's kind of unfortunate um, there are some holes that go all the way through since I've had this thing, I have replaced the headlights because the stock ones you could barely see at night. I got these from Federal Military Parts. They're pretty awesome. They've got high beam, low beam, and running lights. Non-heated, but I don't really need heated. And they put off a decent amount of heat anyways. Now, what's wrong with the old girl? Well. Power steering pump is leaky. Probably a cracked housing, I think. But she still holds enough fluid to drive her around. Um, we are spraying some fluid out. Actually, I believe this is from the overflow when I refilled the power steering fluid, so I don't think that's a big deal. down here you can see the hubs are kind of wet all four of them you can see that hub right there is quite wet and I believe the output seals on all four hubs are bad and that's unfortunate but you know it's something you got to live with if we get a decent shot of the ball joints and everything up here this is the front right tire passenger side um, we don't really have a whole lot of leaking or anything like that the boots look pretty good on most of the ball joints see the other one up there almost look brand new on a lot of them come back here we have the slightest little oil drip right there and I mean it is so minor that I haven't seen any drips where I parked this thing it's pretty good we do have a small fuel leak from this lower line here that guy right there that's easy that's just a new hose that's original hose so it's old now there is the power steering pump that does not look good you can tell that thing's been leaking. It's an active leak. It's coming back and it's getting quite a few things wet, which suck. Oil filter is good. It looks a little wet, but again, that's, that's coming from the power steering pump. Pitman arm, all the steering linkage, 
everything looks great. Now, one thing that's not great, something is out of adjustment on this side of the Humvee. And you can kind of see right here on this link, that shiny spot has been digging onto the side of my rim. Now, this bolt is the stop that hits right here to prevent oversteer. And it's hitting, but we're still digging into this. So I'm thinking this link here is out of adjustment. I believe this is supposed to point downwards. And right now it's pointing straight back, which is contacting the wheel. But that doesn't explain why my wheel is rubbing on my sway bar. That one I'm a little confused on. So if I bring you inside here, um, obviously you got your turbo doghouse. Uh, this guy sticks out a lot longer. Um, then the non-turbo variants, non-turbo variants kind of sticks out a little bit and swoops down sharply. This guy here, if we can get this unlocked, pop up in here. Pop this doghouse off. Oh, I didn't get... There we go. Let's take this out. Ta da! All right, so right behind this heat shield, we've got your spoolie boy right in there. Got your valve covers here, nice and easy to access, crossover pipe. But right here, this sensor right here, I believe, is the um, the cold advance thermostatic switch and these two leads right here go to that um, unfortunately this thing is a real peg to start in the cold weather right now because of that anything below 35 degrees she does not want to start so that'll be one of the first things that we take care of along with probably axle seals and power steering um, as you can see, it's got this plastic air duct, air dam, with the louvers here, so you can adjust your heat and AC. This is a dual AC truck, so you've got your front blower here. This is all the controls and everything in here. you got your fan way down in here. Um, the front fan does kick on. And then the rear system back here, which is controlled with this cannon plug, and then you've got your coolant lines, Freon lines, whatever you want to call them. They come up right about in the center there, underneath that housing. And you got your blower motor and everything back there. This truck does have two systems on either side. You can see behind that grill there. If you kind of Kind of, kind of can see the fins back there, but they're up behind this inner fender well. Like I said, there's one on either side. It's so one thing that's going to be nice is to get that up and running during the uh, Utah summers, so it gets hot. Interior-wise, main damage is the usual. I don't know how to adjust things properly dent in the firewall there that's normally caused by people slamming this forward or being out of adjustment and just knocking into that. 
somebody did smash up the lip right there on the firewall, probably trying to get a valve cover off. But I don't think the valves or there's been any engine work done to this thing. Uh, truly, it looks pretty, pretty solid, pretty stock. This heat shield for the turbo has definitely been taken off and thrown back on because each of these bolts has like three or four washers on each and every one of them. So somebody has been in there, but I don't know what's been done. No way to know. And of course, the obligatory, if any of you have an M1165 or some of the modern variants that have this plastic ducting here, almost guaranteed this is broken right here because it's just this one bolt and this shrinks with heat over the years. Got our fire extinguisher, still good. I have checked it, it's, it's good. Little data plate here. Check it all out. Fifth month of 2006. Pretty cool. Also, interior. Yeah, it's a Humvee. It leaks. Than it does outside. So that brings us to the second part of this video. Alright, well we have the seat taken out now, which like I said, that just kind of slots in this rail here and gets clipped on the front. Um, dual battery setup with that 24 volt system. Got a nice big fuse here for most of the electronics. You can see the military's uh Waterproofing is just slob silicone all over everything. Um, I mean, it's it's everything's covered in silicone. But hey, it's cheap insurance and it somewhat works, so can't really knock it. Um, got a whole jumble of wiring down here. I'm gonna have to go through a lot of it and pull out some of the stuff like this. They just cut off. I think this was for the comms. There's normally a comms system that sits here on a big rack and mounts up to this plate. You can see the discoloration where it was mounted versus the stuff that was in the sun. Um, there's also some antenna lines that went back to the whip antennas in the back. Those were just cut. I'm going to have to pull those out. But overall, yeah, it's a pretty solid rig. There are a lot of things that you can do with a Humvee. I've seen people turn them into street cars. I've seen people turn them into overland rigs. And that's kind of more where I'm leaning is more overland rig, but more on the verge of like just being an awesome off-road vehicle. And I have lots of ideas, but I also need your guys' help on figuring that out. Like what's what are the cool products that I need to put into this? What what are some things that would be awesome to add to this? And starting off, this tarp, <laughs> this cruddy tarp needs to go. I want to do a, a slant back, a hard top slant back with hard doors, get this thing all locked up with some actual locks and not just the tarp windows. I think some nice Corbeau seats would be awesome in here. Um, uh, camera system so I can see behind me because if we do have a slant back on here it's going to be impossible to see behind you. Um, get the Rhino tire carrier, spare tire on there, tires and wheels. I'm thinking some black Rhino wheels with some KO3 tires uh, would be an awesome combo. Um, and paint. Obviously paint. Um, even though I love the original camo on this thing, the Kark paint just kind of sucks. It's faded, which I know. 
It's a military vehicle. I'm not expecting it to be show car quality. But I'm thinking something along the lines of like a FDE and black accents on the whole thing. Um, probably some tintable bed liner on the whole thing. Because it's going to be off-roaded. I don't want to worry about scratching the paint or anything like that. So no crazy high gloss stuff or really nice looking stuff. But tan and black exterior. Maybe some blue accents inside. Because the wife likes blue. Not a ton of crazy stuff. Oh, maybe a sound system. Sound system would be nice so we can actually have some tunes in here. Um, also... This thing does have the original, like, sound deadening um, mats all throughout it. So one thing would be nice to pull that all out. Obviously, when I'm repainting, lay down some dynamat, some really thick stuff to help reduce some noise in here. Every little bit helps. Um, Doghouse does have some sound deadening inside, but there could be more. It's kind of... It's it's loud. Like you got to yell to the person that you're driving with going down the road even at like 40 miles an hour. So that's that's really it. Almost forgot some other things that are wrong with this thing. <laughs> we'll check that out. As you can see these tires have no tread. Front tires are a little bit better. You know, still have some decent tread. You can see all the cracking. These tires are 16 years old. So not a whole lot of driving is going to be done with this thing. Washer reservoir is gone. Um, it was gone when I got it. But it will be nice to get one of those hooked up. Cadillac valve's good. Fan looks good. Engine's solid. It looks a little bit ratty, but that's just cable covering. Other than that, everything's pretty solid in this thing. So let's start it up. Hopefully, I'll get better at this filming thing. Hopefully, I'll get better at editing. And hopefully, I'm entertaining enough that you guys will be along for the ride. Because this is going to be... This is something I've dreamt about for a long time. And I'm finally able to do it. So, I hope you enjoy. 